So over the last few weeks since I started to post some videos on the channel, I've had quite a few messages of people saying, could you tell me a little bit more about the car? Now, about two years ago, I spent a good few weeks over uh, the summertime restoring the underside, the underbody, mainly the rear end of the car. And um, although I did it on a driveway, because I don't really use the car, the majority of, of the work that I've done has stayed as, as it did when I, when I installed it. And what I'd like to do in this video is to, to sort of explore and, and show some, some footage with as much information as I, as I can gather together about what I did, how I did it, what sort of tools you might use, what parts you might want to replace, the parts themselves with some part numbers, and as much information as I can gather, some of it will be in the description, some of it I'm going to try and add to the video as and when. Now I'm just going to do this sort of off the bat and, and go with the flow with the car up on the ramp. I'm not claiming for any, any moment here that this is a concourse car, concourse car. It's not, right? Although I've done it to a, what I would say is, is a very high standard. I was very meticulous about how I did it. There are people out there some of you might who, who might be watching this who have completely stripped the car down got the the shell on a rotisserie stripped it repainted it resealed it everything i didn't do that this was more of a mechanical restoration now of all the things that this car needs it, if the next step for me would be to to sort of look at the bodywork now the bodywork is very good as far as i'm concerned but if it was to take if i was to take it up to the next level that's where i would be going with it but this video is going to focus especially on the underside of the of the vehicle and what you can do so hopefully it's it's a reasonably enjoyable uh, video to watch i'll put as much information there as possible i'm not claiming to be a guru i'm not claiming to be um you know someone who knows everything i don't please feel free to leave comments in the in the box at the bottom and, and have a discussion about things and hopefully what i do show you is helpful especially if you're planning on doing this job because it can it can spiral out of control a little bit there's a lot of while i'm in there kind of jobs so anyway i'll get the car up on the ramp get underneath and we'll start explaining what's what Okay, let's imagine that you've got the car up on, on a ramp or you've got the car on axle stands. The first thing that you really need to do that, that I would recommend is you're going to have to break the, the brake lines here to separate the, the trailing arms. Now, when I say brake, I mean you're going to have to separate them. So I about a week beforehand, on the hard line that goes all the way along the body and up to the front of the car, I soaked them in some release agent and the 11 mil head that swivels on the end of the hard line that if, if you don't do that and you're unlucky enough you'll end up breaking that hard line you'll have to put a you'll have to put a repair in or replace the whole line all the way at the front of the car so it's worth noting that and soaking it about a week in advance you've got one on the side of your showing you and you've got one down here just there now they they do corrode there was a little bit of corrosion on mine I wire wooled it or wire brushed it down and then put some release agent on it and left it about a week. And then when I came to do it with the 11 mm um, brake line spanner, they came undone reasonably well. If you swing on those when they're corroded and seized, you, you risk snapping them. So that's worth doing before you do anything. At this point, however, let me just get a bit focus in there on there. 
you're going to you go, the likelihood is you're going to change these flexes anyway so whether you do um some factory replacements or in my case i used um braided flexes whether you break that part or not doesn't really matter if you're going to change this as well so these go along the trailing arm and up and around the back here and up into the caliber now if you're going to replace those as well and you're going to replace the flexi doesn't really matter but you're going to have to release the brake line to take the trailing arm off so what i did is i just jammed the brake pedal down in the cabin and then when i released these i didn't lose all of the fluid i just lost lost what was in at this end so that's the first thing to consider and then you've got obviously you've got lots of bolts here holding things together so you've got these here for the lower arms i've got the cb auto adjustable arms on i would highly recommend those i'll put the price the, well i'll put the link to them in the description at the time i think i might have paid about 200 pound for them um the benefit of these is that they're adjustable they're very well made i can't recommend them highly enough it's worth dropping paul a message Paul Cook at CB Auto and see if he's got some in stock. I just went for uh, gloss black. Everything else that I had powder coated, I got done in satin, but he does these in gloss. Um, so there's those to, to, to do if you want to re reduce the risk of the originals snapping. They can snap um, at the joint here, especially when the original rose joint sees. Um, it's worth considering getting those. Really happy with those. And then you've got various parts of this um, Haldex or diff support comes off as one. And you've got that side there in there. These ones are power flex. I'll put all the, the parts in the description. You've also got in the top here, you've got more power flex in there. And this part, this aluminium bracket comes off and that supports, there's actually some clips up there that support the loom, which you can clean up and take out. Now, a lot of people paint these and they paint the diff. Now, originally they're not painted and that's why I didn't paint mine. You can do, and sometimes it looks really nice when people paint them with silver, aluminium coated um, sort of finish. I'm not criticising people who do that, but I wanted to leave the original sort of cast aluminium finish on it. So that's why I left that. And I had this blasted, this aluminium bracket. And then you've got these new bolts here. Also, I'll put the link to the part numbers for those in the description. So you've got these that hold on there. You've got new bolts for the mounting the subframe here and here. I'll put as many of the torque settings that I can find into the description um for these parts you've you've then got the other side and on this side you've got the um the light um sensor alignment sensor bracket now the bracket itself is held up with two screws into the subframe i'm hoping you can see that well you can see the, the sensor there the bracket was really crusty i ended up buying a new bracket from audi it was only about 15 pound it wasn't too much it might have been a little bit more i can't remember but the bracket itself was really crusty this sort of drop link arm was okay and then i replaced these two 10 millimeter nuts with um with stainless ones now they are nylock ones and the factory ones are nylock ones but they're not stainless so i did buy originals and then they started to corrode very very quickly so they got replaced something to note here if you replace the lower arms with cb auto ones they're not the same shape they're not rectangular or square like the box section ones that the originals so when you come to remount this this bracket what i ended up doing is putting a little bit of rubber padding in there just to secure it and then when you tighten this on here it doesn't damage the paint and it also holds it secure on here as far as i'm aware this bracket is obsolete now so if you can salvage it and sandblast it and recoat it it's worth doing um i've got a bilstein set up here now you've got a, a, a long bolt here when you put this back in into the hub on the on the trail and arm you really need to be careful you do not strip this and you should only be tightening this bolt back up when you've got the weight of the car back down on the suspension. Right, I'll put the torque settings in the description. 
drop links here now with i didn't buy everything original from the dealership the drop links and the the anti-roll bar bushes which are up there there's two of them one there and one on this side here i used lem forda they were really cheap like 12 quid something like that and the lem forda ones the reason i use lem forda is a lot of the factory suspension components were actually lem forda from original and they come with the audi part numbers so that's you know you can save a little bit of money there they don't come very well protected paint wise i am considering taking them back off and repainting them um there there's already started to corrode a little bit i did have some corrosion on here when i bought the car it it, it had this suspension probably the only good thing the car did have is this setup with this bilstein suspension um i can highly recommend the, those if you're not going to go the route of coilovers um then on the front then this is a, a quite a good setup the springs sit on these pads on the on the trailing arms you've got your abs sensor coming along here you can take all this plastic bracket off it just goes on with threaded sort of stud on the trailing arm you can take all this off you can clean it you can unplug it you can clean all the sensor and the back of the sensor which is in the back of the hub there um, and comes out the front on the ABS ring and you can you can clean all that wire and loom up good ch chance to change them if you think that they might be faulty but they've got these pads here on just above you've got it's a two-piece thing you've got a rubber pad with a sort of metal insert in it in the top and it's held in with like a like a rubber sort of it's kind of like a rubber grommet that goes into the the, the base the metal base of the trailing arm and then you've got this sort of um spacer white nylon spacer on the top you've got an orangey colored pad which the spring goes up against now when you take those off you might find that the the underside of the body where the part, the seat sits at the top is quite corroded it's a good opportunity to sort of grind that back with a an abrasive pad and protect that and repaint it that's what i did i used um built hamber zinc primer after i treated that and then repaint it to the top coat and then put that back and these pads um they're not particularly cheap for both sides the three parts the nylon pad and the rubber mount and then the upper rubber part you're not going about eight not going on about 80 quid for the lot um now the upper arms i just had restored just powder coated satin black and then um the bushes on this end i didn't upgrade them um i've used lm forda ones now these press into the hub you'll need a press to press those in and the top one as well needs to be pressed in new bolts there are slightly different sizes i think one of them either that one or this one is 75 millimeters and one's 80. don't quote me on that exactly but there's definitely a slight difference in the size between the two of the bolts i don't think you'd have a problem using the same one i'm not quite sure why the five millimeter makes a huge difference but there is a slightly different part number for those the backing plate you can't take the backing plate off until you've taken the disc and i think if i remember correctly the the the, the, the ring on the bearing at the front the abs ring again I'm, i can't remember entirely but they're only held on by three or four seven millimeter or eight millimeter um bolts but again you can take those off and you can powder coat them or you can if you can source new ones you can buy new ones and put those on so that's that side you you've obviously got your caliper to take off here and, and you, you, you they're sort of held on by the hub here i um restored the uh, the rear calipers that is a pig of a job i might talk about that later but there's a little pin there that holds just here that holds the brake cable handbrake cable you can buy those new you can buy the springs new if you've restored the calipers however you won't need to do that because you can just fit the caliper as it is um the stickers that you see um a man called, called david clark on the forum has replicated these and these are a really nice addition if you're restoring the underside so you can put those in as well if you wanted to for some of these arms and the drive shafts um when you move forward a little bit you've got the tank straps 
the bolts here, there are one each end of the tank straps. There's one here and one underneath this tray. These star washers go into the studs on the tank straps and these just push up. You'll, if, you, if you work on these cars often, you'll be familiar with these types of, um, these types of fixings and they can, um, once you've taken them off, they're not great. They, you can reuse them, but for what they cost from the dealership or eBay, they're very, very cheap. It's worth changing them. And there's a tank strap here with one bolt there and another bolt at the front end. I don't think you can see them because it's held under these covers. Buy new fixings here. And you could do, I didn't, but you can take off the heat shields here off the off the fuel tank. They're all held on by these as well. I think I might have replaced these, but I didn't take that. I just cleaned these up. Um, so the tank straps, when I took my tank straps off, they were absolutely shot. So I managed to source some better ones and had those powder coated as well. And um, it's, it's a nice addition to do that as well but while you're at it. Moving a little bit further forward, you've got the Toei um, cover, which is obsolete. You've got the Toei mount and the seven bolts that hold it. Now, I actually snapped one of the bolts in the body um, and I'm yet to drill it out and put the bolt back in. Um, I think there are seven bolts. I'm pretty sure there are four on this side and three on the other side. These go really crusty. So if you can get a good one of those and restore that and powder coat that, it's worth doing because that can really spoil the underside. So there's that. Now, the heat shield here, you tend to find that the you you get that um, sort of corrosion where the steel um, washers and steel nuts and, and bolts eat into the aluminium um, heat shield. Now, there's a couple of lads I know who have really polished these heat shields and they come up really nice. Um, that's something you can do when you take the heat shield down once you've got the exhaust out of the way. Um, the mounts for the exhaust, this one, held on by two 13 mil bolts. There's one, one here. This um, mount is different to that mount. Don't know if you can see it just in there, but they're still, last I checked, because I bought new ones from the dealership and, and painted them and repainted them, they're not expensive at all they're about i think i paid about 15 pound for that one and not much more if anything different for that one there they're very very cheap um so some stuff it's just not worth restoring you can just buy new parts but just be aware that some of the factory paint isn't that good now some lads have obviously gone for upgraded or you know more performance orientated exhausts i haven't done that I might do that in the future, but at the minute I haven't. So, you know, you can really, once you've got the exhaust out of the way and you get the shields out of the way, you've got this one here held on by these fixings. You can get get that, those out of the way. You can get the, make sure the tank's empty. You can get the tank straps off. Um, you know, if you've got some ready to replace them with. Separately though, to the suspension wise, you know, you can, once you've got your, your drive shafts undone, and you've got your, your your arms undone from here, and you you've got four bolts here that hold the trail and arm on. I don't know if I can get underneath to see. You've got one there, one there, and two on the other side of the trail and arm. You can buy these clips that hold the brake lines on. Now I went with hell braided lines here, and on that side and on the front suspension as well. Now. Once you've got those undone, you get your four bolts for your trailing arms out. This will then drop. You can then get the spring out and you can start to undo um, other components around here. So you can put the, the drive shaft bolt at the front. Obviously, I'm assuming you've got the wheels off. You can undo that bolt, get the disc off, get the caliper off. Undo the bottom bolt here. Take the bolt out the top. Take this suspension um, damper out of the way. And then once you start to disassemble all these individual parts here and the drive shafts you can then start to um, drop the subframe now I dropped the subframe and I don't know whether you can do it without with the diff and everything attached now you will need to undo the prop shaft and let me just check this um, was it this side or that side I can't remember these ones here you're going to have to undo the prop shaft and this donut which is part of it 
drops down with with the shaft itself <clears throat> and then you can take it off and you end up with like a a three piece um how do I, like like a a triangular piece that union that it joins onto so it's worth putting those bolts back into that on the diff itself and then you can lower the dil the, the diff down with the the subframe down on a trolley jack and, and and pull it out the back of the car now when you've got the diff out it's a perfect opportunity to change the fluid and if you haven't already done so the haldex fluid so the filter and that that's up there that you know access is not great you can do the the haldex fluid you can do the haldex filter you can change the diff oil and then you can you know you've dragged it all out in one you can clean it all up and then you can separate um as many components as possible i don't even think i took the arms off at this end i just undid them from there left the drive shafts in undid them from there pulled the trailing arms out and then dropped the tank um not the tank the 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 subframe with as much as i could on it in one piece and then you can start stripping it and rebuilding it and and, and sorting everything out um Another thing to note is you can use this opportunity to take off all the Torx bits on the arch liners. You can get behind all the arch liners and check for corrosion there and clean those up. You can change the CV boots here and here and on the other ends. So you can check those and it's, it's a really good opportunity to really go through everything on the rear end of the of the car now the suspension where it joins these joints here and i'm struggling to show you because of the light on this side you can see better where you've got the trailing arm goes into its mount that goes up into the body what you've got is um i use the super pro um a super pro bush you can buy power flex but i decided to go with the super pro ones now getting them out of the trailing arms there's a trailing arm there and you're trying to get the bush out there's a long bolt that goes through into the mount itself and then the bush is pressed in the performance ones are not so you can get those in easily but getting them out you're going to have to burn them out or press them out I ended up burning them out and then just chipping away at them and eventually they came out. But that can be a bit of a nightmare, getting them out. They will come eventually, just, you know how it is, if you're taking bushes out, you'll just have to work at it and you'll, you can drill them, you can burn them, they'll come out. Um, the mounts themselves, so these mounts where the trailing arms go into, they can be cleaned up and behind them there's a plastic cup. And I'm assuming it's just to stop any dirt getting up into the body and, and like salt and grime and, and the things sticking to the, the sort of the steel body part inside. So you can take those out. One of them was cracked on mine, so I ended up replacing it. Again, that wasn't much from the dealership. So you can you can you can buy new ones of those or, or a brake. I might be able to help you get some if they've got the car apart. The handbrake cables before you take the trailing arms out, you'll obviously need to do them. So this is just a bung. Let's see if we can see it better on this side. Um, just here, you've got a bung that goes into the trailing arm and it comes out on the end, just there, you can see, just there, it comes out here and there's a little sort of bung or washer thing that goes around the cable and comes up and into the handbrake mechanism so keep those because you'll need to feed the trailing arms up and in and through and into the into the trailing arms themselves so you can clean all the cables just leave the you can leave the cables down hanging if you want i just left them hanging because they were fine didn't replace them they didn't need replacing and um yeah just one more thing to note here up there just here there is a breather it comes down from the inside of the body. It's just pushed up into a bone. So you just pull the breather out and it'll come out with the differential and um, the case. And it's just sort of um, 
plugged in, it's not the right word really plugged in it's it's pushed into a, a small nipple on the on the diff itself so that can come out with that as well you've got the loom here and you've got a loom for your light um level adjustment sensor there um you don't want to drop this arm with that attached and snap that and snap this arm up here on the on the sensor so just be careful when you when you do that undo the 10 millimeter and release it before you do anything um yeah so that's the rear end of the car that's about it it's not a particularly difficult job to do in that you don't i wouldn't say you need to be an expert but you do need to have a little bit of patience think methodically and what i would genuinely recommend is that you prepare for the job by buying as many parts as possible and what some some people do is they'll get the parts um the 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 sort of the subframe parts in advance uh, from a breaker powder coat them have them stripped powder coated and you could in theory if you had all the parts ready all the powder coated parts you could in theory probably do it over a weekend your only limitation if you if you don't have those parts aside is you're going to have to wait for a powder coater or, or for you to strip them and recoat them and repaint them if that's the, the way you're going you've also got the bearings in the ends of the trailing arms on the other side in the hubs that you're going to have to you're going to have to press in um i use fag ones that i bought from uh auto dock they were about 50 pound for both of them um and they were pressed in to the hub and um, the front bearings are the same as the back ones as far as i'm aware and um you the the, the biggest not problem but what i didn't like doing is after everything had been coated and you're trying to press everything into the new coated parts and you're trying not to chip the edges and stuff so there is there is that um yeah so Okay, so moving on a little, little bit, you, let's assume that you, you've started the job and, and you've took lots of the parts off, you've got the under panels off, the, the protective panels underneath the fuel tank. It does open this, there's always this with jobs like this, while I'm in there. So one of the while I'm in there jobs is the fuel filter. So on the driver's side, underneath this panel here, on that side there, you can see the fuel filter. It's worth doing that. Okay, so moving on to the front of the car or towards the front of the car, you know, you could just separate that. That could be one job, just the back. And for me, that's what I did. Um, I did that in one sort of swoop, a lot of the back end of the car. Um, there might be some bits that I've missed. There might be bits that you've noticed that you thought, oh, I would do that better or I would have done this differently or whatever. You know, there's loads of different ways of tackling it. Um, you know, I'd be interested to hear other people's ways of doing it and different uh, strategies for, for getting on with this kind of job. But moving on to the front of the car, um, there's only some bits that I have done and some bits that I haven't. So I did spend some time um, stripping these. These were powder coated, the, the, the front wishbones. I put the cookbot sleeves with Super Pro bushes in the front part and in the back, the Super Pro caster adjusted bushes there and new bolts here and here. Um, Lem Forda ball joints and Lem Forda track rod ends and Lem Forda anti roll bar bushes. Now, I didn't put uprated bushes here. I was told, you know, by some people that that can make it quite harsh. So, although I've got the Powerflex bushes up the top, I've got the minus 10 millimeter uh, top mounts, these anti roll bar bushes and the back ones, I didn't upgrade them. Now, some people might say, oh, you know, they're worth doing. Maybe, yeah. And uh, for some people, that'll be ideal, but I didn't. And the, the ride of this car, it's really tight. It doesn't feel ridiculously harsh on those build stains. It, it feels pretty good. It rides lovely. It's been set up nice. And it, with all the new suspension components, it rides really well. Um, when you get these things off, like the backing plates, you've got the calipers and carriers, which are 
had had off and powder coated them, and then I, and then I put new seals and and pistons in them, and the hell braided lines. Um, these are the front ones, the back ones are the same, but the the carbon braided brake lines worth doing really. I think putting braided ones on, um, especially when it comes to brakes. So they were done as well. Just from that angle there, you can see. Uh, and then um, this side, you've got the same. On this side, what you've got is, just move that up there. You've got the bracket here for the light level sensor. That is really cheap new, if it's still available. It was when I bought it. Um, it just doesn't come very, with a very good coating, so it's worth stripping, priming, and, and putting like a good coating on it. The factory coating is really bad. But yeah, so this side, you've got the backing plates, you've got the calipers, the carriers, the ball joints, the um, track rod ends. Um, and the annual bar bush that you can get to here as well. It's worth changing. Um, you can also, whilst, you know, if you've still got your side trays, because I've took the under tray off here, um, so I can get a bit of access, is you can replace these. So by replacing these, you can then secure your under tray a bit better. Um, there's the dog bone. Chris, uh, Carl Chris has just done a really good video on changing this. Where you need to change these bolts um it's worth doing those you could powder coat that that bracket and um you know there's the fixings for the bumper which i changed put new ones of those in and you know you can you can powder coat this boost hose here which i've done that's quite a nice one to do because that goes really heavily corroded that one and that's on all the models and um yeah that's that's worth worth getting powder coated as well. Um, you've got this side of the, tr the tray, the fixings, where you can change. And, you know, you've got, you know, if you haven't already dropped the sump and done the the sump pickup pipe, you know, there's that to do as well. That's a good one to do. And uh, make sure that you, you're happy that you're not gonna end up with that blocking and, and damaging, the, damaging the engine. Um, yes, admittedly, I could probably do with you know, addressing the subframe. It's not by any means desperate to be done, but in terms of the underside restoration, the subframe, it would be nice to get this subframe out and put new bolts into it and, and have it all powder coated and, and drop the, the, uh, the steering rack and clean that up. I'm not particularly um, desperate to get it done. Uh, I just want to enjoy the car a little bit at the minute, but that is definitely something in the future that could be addressed. Um, which would really help improve the underside of this particular car. Um, there's the heat shield here for the cats. There's a lower one and an upper one. The the bolts go into the into some brackets on the cat, and then there's some here, and then the fixings for it are actually obsolete now. Um, so you you might need to come up with something if you really wanted to refit this if you've got an aftermarket exhaust and you haven't got this and you know sports cats and stuff then obviously it doesn't really matter but you know the underside compromises of this subframe and and obviously the wishbones and you can really get stuck into you know the the the, the uh, track rod ends and and, and drive shafts and the back plates and brakes and the dog bone mount and things and you know i end up sourcing a um, an engine tray that was um, like new old stock, so that was really like nice to put that on. I've only taken it off really, so I can do this part of the video. Um, but you can replace all the speed fixings, um, and there's lots of like nuts and bolts you can get stuck into replacing here. Um, there's an exhaust mount there, you can check that and clean that up if you want to. And then the two main bolts here, here, and then the front ones, where are they? Um, are they under there somewhere? Yeah, there's one there and one here somewhere, I think. Yeah, on that side, that needs doing. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there's loads to do. You could separate the two jobs, front and back. You could do the whole thing in one if you really wanted to. But, uh, yeah, it's, there's definitely, it's, I would say it's a very enjoyable job to do there's lots and lots of parts that you can replace it's definitely a job that i would plan carefully um you know you could just go at it if you want to drop the whole thing in one and then do it all 
the way I did it was I planned it, had most of the parts. The waiting around was mainly for parts being powder coated and bringing them back, pressing in bearings. But you could prepare that all in, in, in advance and then do it all in one weekend and raise it all back up with new parts and then sell your subframe and things or have them powder coated and sell them on. There's lots of different ways of doing it. There's lots of different um, strategies for, you know, depending on budget, uh, time, availability of parts, the parts that you want to change, depending on if you're upgrading them or if you're just going for standard. There's lots of different ways of doing it. And, um, you know, this particular car, which is a 225, 2002 225 Quattro, um, the back end is obviously going to be different with a uh, front wheel drive one. Um, in terms of it being a, a 180, then the, the, as far as I'm aware, there were only some slight differences with maybe the brake the brake calibers and discs and things. But for the majority of the quad rolls, they're going to be the same, um, even if it's a V6. As far as I'm aware, there is slight differences in the in the floor pans and things, but the majority of the Mark 1 TTs are going to share a similar sort of um, platform and setup as you've just seen in this video. So I'd love it if we could get a little bit of a discussion going in the, in the description, in, in, not in the description, in the, in, the, in the box at the bottom of the video. Um, I'd like to hear your stories about how you've done it or how you would do it or how you're planning on doing it or if it's been helpful. And I'll put as much information as I can in the description. And when I, when I come to edit this video, hopefully you'll have seen some of the part numbers pop up throughout the video. So hopefully it's been helpful to some people. And uh, if you are planning on doing the job, then you know, it gives you a little bit of insight. But yeah, if you haven't already done so and subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you could. And um, 